can't. I'm so upset. What? I am doing everything right on this keto and I'm not having success. Well, maybe you think you're doing it right, but you're not really doing it right. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on a couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So you're telling me that even though I've guzzled a gallon of this today, I still got leg cramps. I still feel like I have keto flu. Like what is going on? <laughs> So like I said, you may be doing things that you think are really helping you on your keto journey, but they're actually hindering you. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Five things that you think may be helping your journey, but are actually hindering it. And we're going to start off with this one right here. Yeah. And I got another one over here because they were two for four at the store. Because <laughs> <laughs> even if we're not going to drink it, we want a deal. Okay. So number one, not getting the proper source of electrolytes. I get into forums all the time. You were very guilty of this, which is kind of why we're kind of having this little play with you because yeah. you did this early on, right? Well, it wasn't with Gatorade. It was with Powerade Zero. Blue yes. Powerade was my groove. I was drinking it by the bottle. I was definitely patting myself on the back that I had made the switch from like, you know, full calorie yep. Powerade with the sugar in it to, you know, Powerade Zero, which is good. I mean, that's a that's a forward momentum move. Yep. However, it wasn't doing what I needed it to do because it wasn't able to do what I needed it to right. do. Right. So a lot of people get started on keto and they're like, I'm drinking all of the Gatorade Zero I can. I'm drinking all the Powerade Zero. And I'm here to tell you, you can't possibly drink enough of this stuff to help your keto journey. No. Why? We actually have a video. It's a little outdated. We have to redo it. Probably crazy. Because there's some new products on the market which actually change some of that data, but it doesn't impact this. I'm going to leave that one right up here, as well as our blog post down below, where we compare all of these different sources of electrolytes from about a year and a half ago. And here's the thing. The whole purpose of that video was to use products and a lot of people use Zip Fizz, which is a good right. product, but it does have two to four carbs per serving in it. And so we were like, what else could you do to get a thousand milligrams of potassium? Because you need 3,500 to 4,500 milligrams. Well, a lot of people think Gatorade, right? Because yeah. that's it's, it's all about marketing and promotions and everything right. else. And they're all owned by like Pepsi and Coke and everything else. Well, here's the thing. To get a thousand milligrams of potassium from your Gatorade or Powerade, you need 28 servings. And I believe this is what, two and a half servings per bottle? So you need to drink like 14 of these bottles. Now here's the thing. Hope you're thing. not doing anything today. Aside from that being expensive and having to pee, each serving of this, it says on the label, is less than one carb, which means it's got between a half to one. At so least. So this is it. This is all of your carbs for the day. So <laughs> it's actually more than that. So if you drink enough of this to get just a thousand milligrams of potassium, yeah. you're consuming about 25 total or net carbohydrates. Yeah, because actually you're right, because at first I'm looking at the the single serving, but there's, you know, per container. Two and a half servings. There's 10 so calories. So there's at least two serving, two carbs in this and container. And two carbs in this container. And you need to drink 14 of them. So That's uh, a lot. That would definitely be hindering your progress. So what do you do? You need to use some good quality electrolytes. For example, something like from our sponsor today. Yay. So, um, Today's video is sponsored by Equip. Uh, Equip makes some incredible nutritional products. Uh, one of them is their protein powder, which we absolutely love. This is a beef protein. I use it every day in my different shakes. And uh, you can also make ice cream with it and you can make a custard with it. Um, just take a look at our videos where we do keto chow ice cream. Same thing, just use this instead of keto chow. 
and uh, it is delicious. We have a coupon code and a link down below. This is our new favorite product for magnesium. It's just a dollar a serving and it gives you one scoop, 350 milligrams of magnesium. So remember, this was two for four. So mm -hmm. this is still $2 and it's not going to give me everything that I need. And that's gonna be a dollar and give me everything right. that I need. Now this isn't gonna give you all your potassium, but this is a great source of magnesium now for your potassium. Um, Perfect Keto, which is the sister company of Equip, also has an electrolyte drink. You can also use the Redmond electrolyte drink. You can use the Keto Chow electrolytes and the Daily Minerals. But using something like this is not going to give you electrolytes. Yeah. Let's talk about what is another thing that you were doing to be really successful? We're supposed to eat copious amounts of fat, right? And I'm going to get my fat from here because I'm used to eating vegetable oil. Okay, number one, we don't need to eat copious amounts of fat, except for when we first get started on keto to help us get fat adapted because it's gonna make life not suck. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I'm gonna to be suck. blatant on it. If anybody knows our channel, we're gonna be honest, right? Rachel likes to say balls. Balls. I'm gonna tell you how it is. And when you first get started on keto, when you're cutting out all the carbohydrates and all the sugar, life can suck. So what do you do? Eat what's delicious, fat is delicious. It really is, because fat's flavor. The cool thing is, is that as you get going on keto, you can cut down on that fat, but you don't have to say no to the fat. You just don't have to eat copious amounts of it. But whatever you do, this is going to cause issues, right? Whether, if you start doing this. Whether you are on keto or not. Yeah, so if you're, if you're on keto and you're wondering like, why is my inflammation not going away? But you're using vegetable oils, corn oils, seed oils. You're uh, using traditional mayonnaise. You're eating lots of salad dressings that are made with canola oil. All of those oils lead to inflammation and that is definitely gonna impact your keto journey. One of the biggest things about keto is it's an anti-inflammatory lifestyle. So. It's not that like these are going to not put you in ketosis, but they're not gonna make your body feel optimal. And again, if you're dealing with inflammation, you don't wanna give yourself anything that's going to increase inflammation. We're trying to get the inflammation out of yes. us. So what are you gonna use? You're gonna use butter. Ghee. Uh, you can use lard. Beef tallow. Uh, you can use avocado oil. You could use olive oil. And you could also use coconut oil. So any of those kind of fats are really gonna be good. Are you gonna pay a little bit more money? Absolutely, but think about this. You're going to be able to ditch some of the money that you were spending on having to go to the doctor and of course all of the different medications. Plus you're not buying all the carby stuff. And this stuff's not cheap either. No, it's not free. Okay, what else do we got over there that, that you're doing on keto? I'm really enjoying this. Oh, you got some other ones over there too. And this. So getting and a this. lot of our nutrition from packaged products. Yeah, and these are delicious quality products Nothing that we wrong with love. any of these things. We're, we're not picking on any of these companies. Obviously, we, we have all this in our house. I didn't, I went and bought this for the video, Yeah. but I did not buy these for the video. These came right out of our freezer. Yeah. Okay, so what do we mean? These are meant to be a little bit of a treat. Meant to be a little bit of life doesn't suck. Right, exactly. Right? I mean, we use this as treats. Sometimes we use this as like a grab and go option if you're looking for a bar on the go. Joe's going to officiate a game. He doesn't have time for lunch. He can eat this on the way. But you definitely want to minimize how many wrappers are in your life every yes. single day. You don't want to have all of your nutrition coming from something in a wrapper. Yeah, if you are basing your macros, especially although we do not recommend it, we do understand some people cannot get past the don't count calories thing. I know Dr. Barry talks about it. Our thing is, is protein calories don't count, fat calories do count. But there are a lot of people who just can't dump the count calories mentality. Yeah. And so they're counting calories and they're counting carbohydrates. And they're going, I don't understand what's going on. I'm keeping my carbs under 20. I ate a pint of this, that's 600 calories. And I ate a couple of these and I ate a couple bars and I'm only at 1200 calories and my carbs are under 20 and I don't get what's going on. What's going on is you're not getting proper nutrition. Right. This should not be the source of your nutrition. This should be a small treat. 
one serving out of the four that's in here. One, maybe two of these. And this one bar, and not all of it in the same day. Right, and once in a while. Yeah. Right. You do not want to be eating a meal replacement bar, you know, and getting your nutrition. That's you know, you should be shopping around the outer aisle of the grocery store for the majority of the food that you eat on a regular basis. Yeah. This, like, especially a meal, like this is a treat. If you want to say this is a meal replacement, it's not a bar. It's it's a supplement to add to your food. Like Rachel said, shop the outer aisle. You should be getting whatever your goal weight is in grams of protein. So like, for example, your goal weight, Rachel's trying to maintain 150 pounds, 150 grams of protein per day. That's eating lots of meat and bacon and chicken and beef and pork and fish and salmon, hot, you can eat salmon, super high in protein, crab, shrimp. If you do need to add some extra protein and you want a packaged product, you want something on the go, grab something like the Equip Protein Powders and you can put a scoop of that in a shaker bottle. You can use a keto chow shake. That is a better place to be getting some of your nutrition. These are treats. They shouldn't be your only source of your nutrition. If 90% of your food is coming like this, that is not going to help you. No, and it's gonna stall your progress. So while we're on this, let's talk about number four, and that is only following a net carb protocol. Yeah, a lot of times people will have a, if it fits my macros attitude, mm -hmm. and that can be very dangerous. You wanna have both a, you know, a net carb protocol, if that's what you like, but also a total carb cap. Yeah, and I know, we beat this like a dead horse. Yes. But we would it's never beat a horse important dead or alive. Us. We actually have an entire video all about net carb versus total carb and the way we believe that you should practice keto. That video is right up here. And what that is, is if you want to follow net carbs, which is perfectly fine when you get started, have a total carb cap. So what do I mean by that? Do 20 net carbs. So I'm not going to eat more than 20 net carbs, but I cannot have more than 40 total carbs. Why do you want to do that? Because now when you look at this without my glasses, where it has 11 total carbohydrates, one gram of dietary fiber, and what is that? Eight grams of sugar alcohol. Right. That's making it one net carb per serving, which means the entire pint is only four net carbs. However, this entire pint is 44 total carbs. Yeah. So if you're following a net carb with a total carb cap, you won't eat the whole pint. Or five of them. Right. Because five of these would be your tw 20 net carbs. And you don't, you you think I wouldn't eat five of these in a day? Absolutely. The carb addict in me will absolutely eat five of these in a day. And the same thing for this. So this is a great bar. Sometimes people are eating three or four of them a day to replace their meals. However, there's 13 total carbs in each bar. So mm -hmm. without a total carb cap, you may eat too many, but with a total carb cap, you're not gonna eat more than one. And you can even go down to, because we have all three of these here, 11, 13, that's 24, and here's 18. That would be more than your total carb cap. So you can't have all of this in the same day. So if you follow number four, then that's gonna help you stay on track with number three yeah. of not overdoing too many packaged products. Right. So number five, what are you doing for movement? Dude, I'm keto. I don't have to move. That's the whole point of this, that I just have fat melt off and I don't even have to get up off the couch. It doesn't work that way. You need to get some movement in. Now, you don't have to go to the gym and work out three hours a day. No. I don't really believe that doing a bunch of cardio was going to help you lose weight. It's great for your heart. But if you want to lose weight, you need to do a little bit of muscle exercise. You need to increase that muscle mass. But you have to do something. Now, if you've never done anything, I love Dr. Barry's method. Double whatever you're doing. If the only movement you get all day is getting up and going to the mailbox. Do it twice. Yeah. When you go to sit down on the couch to watch a television show, get up and then sit down again. You just doubled your movement. Well, and here's the thing. Yes, you don't have to do a whole bunch of exercise, like in some diets where they're like, it's very exercise driven in order to lose the weight, you have to sweat it off. Right. Like I get, you know, that's a great thing about keto. However, 
as you regain mobility and like take your life back, isn't that a blessing that we can move? I can remember when it was a pain to move that we, you know, you had to travel in a motorized scooter to get through Disney World. Yep. The fact that we don't have to use a cane anymore or, you know, that we can walk around, I feel like it's a badge of honor. Yeah. It's a privilege. So when you go to the grocery store, instead of looking for the closest spot up in the front, go park a little bit in the back because the more movement you get, the more your body's gonna build muscle because again, we're increasing our protein and as we increase our protein, our body's gonna build muscles with that and the more muscle that you build, the more fat you can burn. It's kind of a cool thing. Your body's muscle wants that fat. So the, all we gotta keep doing is put more muscle on, we burn more fat, and then we can eat more and more and more food. Well, and also you're helping to tell your body how you want to sculpt while you lose the weight. Cause yeah. sometimes people lose and if you're not doing anything, you know, you can have some like skin that's losing elasticity mm -hmm. as you lose weight, but we're not directing the skin to, to do anything. Yeah, and the cool thing about keto is, is the more you do this, the more you lose weight, the more you get rid of your inflammation, the more energy you're going to have. I mean, we started an entire keto camping and RV channel, which I'll link right up there, just because all of a sudden we realized we had so much more energy for activities and we wanted to get out and explore the great outdoors. And you're not going to be in that same cycle that you were before on old diets, where it was like lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight. And then after you've lost weight, you're just waiting for it to come back. This weight is gone forever. So you can start living your life. Okay, so let's talk about our bonus one. Are you intermittent fasting? Every single day. Oh, mad. <laughs> Every day of the week. Well, here's the problem with that. If you go OMAD or even intermittent fast every single day, you could actually be hurting your progress. Because remember, we're talking about getting more protein in, and I hear a lot of times, you know, people that are just doing OMAD are also trying to get all that protein in one meal, and they're finding it super challenging, and so they're not getting all their protein in, because you, I mean, it's just very difficult to do that in just one meal. Yeah, because remember, you should be eating at least 100 grams of protein a day, but again, I'm, I'm gonna venture to say most people are not trying to weigh 100 pounds, they're trying to weigh somewhere between 130 and 170 if they're a woman and between 170 and 200 if they're a guy. So that's how much protein you should be eating in grams. That's gonna be very difficult to get into one and even sometimes two meals because you'd be talking about like, you know, 150 grams of protein, that's like a giant chicken breast, maybe a piece of salmon, probably a half a pound to a pound of ground beef, uh, maybe even a couple of eggs and some bacon in there. That is a lot of food. So a lot of times when people are eating OMAD, even if you're not doing a higher protein, if you're not eating like all of the amount of nutrition, the energy, then you could actually be slowing down your metabolism. So Absolutely. So we definitely need to make sure you're getting all of your food in. So what we suggest is maybe not have a one meal a day thing, but have a time window to eat. So say like, I'm gonna only eat over a four hour period, but you're gonna eat constantly over those four hours. Yeah, there's not a race to see who can finish their plate first. You have all of that time and use all of that time. Mm -hmm. It's more important, even if you have to eat three meals a day to get all of your nutrition, especially your protein in, than it is to do intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting definitely has some benefits, but you're better off doing it two or three days a week as opposed to every single day. And also if you're getting into something like alternate day fasting, which can have some phenomenal results and bring some really good autophagy to your body, on the days that you're eating, that is a feast day, yeah. which means on that feast day, you should be eating two days worth of food. Right. And if you wanna see somebody who's really good at doing that, go check out Watch Autumn Keto because she does alternate day eating and that is how she exactly does it. She eats double calories every other day and she has phenomenal results. I'll leave a link for her channel right up here. So that is gonna be today's video. Let us know down in the comments section if you have fallen into any of these traps, because I can tell you the reason that we came up with this video is done all of them. we fell into every one of these traps. So we are speaking from experience. We we did the Gatorade. We ate way too many keto products. Bad oil. We were using the bad oils. We were intermittent fasting every single day to the point where we were only eating like five or 600 calories a day sometimes. I mean, we've done it all. So. Learn from our mistakes and don't make these mistakes again. <laughs> now, if you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other informational videos that I'm gonna link 
right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.